If you have ever wanted to run Rust code directly in your browser using WebAssembly without touching C++ or MScripten, this video is for you. We'll break it down step by step, what WebAssembly is, why Rust is perfect for it, how to install the toolchain, build a real project, and get it running in HTML and JavaScript. Whether you are new to Wasm or just looking for a clean Rust setup, this guide will walk you through it all. Few key concepts to explain here. We are not using C++ or Enscript in this time. Rust has native Wasm support via Wasm pack and output runs in the browser alongside JavaScript. So before we jump into the code, let's quickly recap what WebAssembly is, especially if you haven't watched my previous video. WebAssembly or Wasm is a low level binary format that runs in the browser. Think of WebAssembly as a universal, super optimized instruction format, like a tiny program written in the machine's native language, but one that runs safely inside your browser. It's not written by hand, it's generated from high level languages like Rust or C. Main goal of WebAssembly is to run code written in other languages like Rust, C, Go, etc. in the browser. It's not meant to replace JavaScript, but to work with it. Even though it's called WebAssembly, it's also starting to be used outside the browser, for example, in serverless apps and plugins. Now let's talk about Rust. Rust compiles natively to Wasm. No shims or complex toolchains needed. Rust is fast, memory safe, and has great Wasm tooling. This makes it one of the most popular languages for WebAssembly. Let's also take a minute to understand why we are using Rust in the first place. Rust is a system programming language like C or C++, but modern and memory safe. It compiles to machine code just like C, but unlike C++, it has no null pointers, no memory leaks, no data races in multi-threaded code. You can think of Rust as a modern version of C or C++. It gives you full control over memory and performance, but with guardrails. It helps you avoid things like crashing, memory leaks, and bugs related to threading. That's why some developers call it C++ without the foot guns. It removes the dangerous parts while keeping up the speed. Rust has official WebAssembly support. It produces small, fast binaries. It integrates well with JavaScript via tools like Wasm BindGen, and it's safer than C++. You don't need to be a Rust expert to follow this video. We'll explain each line of Rust code as we go, and you will pick up the basics naturally. So ready to continue? The next section will be the tool installation, like Rust Up, Wasm Pack, and Basic Setup, creating the Rust plus Wasm project, and line-by-line -line code explanations. All right, now that we know what Rust and WebAssembly are, let's set up our environment so we can start coding. So now that we know what Rust and WebAssembly are, let's set up our environment so we can start coding. The tools we'll be using are Rust Up, which installs Rust and manages toolchains, Wasm pack, which builds Rust code to Wasm with JavaScript bindings, NPM or Yarn to serve a project and integrate with the browser. A browser, of course, uh, should be installed on your machine and a local HTTP server, which serves HTML and Wasm files for testing. In this video, I'm working on Windows 11, but don't worry if you are on Mac OS or Linux, I'll guide you through alternatives whenever the commands differ. So the first step is to install Rust with Rustup. For that, you need to use official installer from the website. This is the recommended method for Windows users. If you are on Linux or Mac OS, you can copy and paste this command in your shell. For Windows users, you can just do this, and then a prompt like this would pop up. Now note, I already have RustUp installed, so the prompts you are seeing might differ. It would ask you a couple of questions like how to install C++ prerequisites if they are not already installed. And I would recommend to use option one via Visual Studio Community Installer, which is a free version of Visual Studio from Microsoft. But do carefully read and select the option that best suits your setup. Do keep an eye at taskbar as sometimes Visual Studio Installer icon sneaks in without showing the Visual Studio Installer by itself and the whole process seems to hang in command prompt. So once the Visual Studio installation wizard completes, the command prompt would automatically continue. So here, everything is ready. This setup process is going to install Rust C, which is the Rust package manager and build tool, Cargo, which is Rust package manager and build tool, and Rustup, which is the tool chain and version manager. 
right? So all I need to do is press enter as suggested here and Rust is installed. For you, it's going to take a bit longer. A note about Cargo, Cargo is similar to NPM for Rust. It installs packages called crates, manages your project and builds code. Rust Dev helps keep your toolchain updated or switch between nightly, beta and stable versions. Next step is to verify everything is properly set up. To do that, you need to open a command prompt and issue the following commands. If you see some proper version numbers appearing on the screen, this means the installation was successful. Otherwise, you need to reinstall and do it carefully this time. Now that we know that Rust is properly installed, we need to install Wasmpack, which compiles Rust to WebAssembly and generates JavaScript bindings. To do that, we are going to use cargo with the following command. All right, it's gonna take a while for you. Since I already had it installed, it was very quick. All right, next we need to install a local HTTP server. Now you have a bunch of options. You can either use cargo, with this command, cargo install basic HTTP server, or if you are a fond of Node and Node.js is already installed, then all you need to do is issue this command from the project folder once the project is ready. And it's gonna start HTTP server and serve files in that project. We are not gonna use that now. For Mac OS and Linux users, the best alternative is to use Python's web server, which can be started using this command. But for this, you need to have Python installed so you head over to python.org and download and install Python 3. All right, so all our tooling is complete. We installed RustUp, which installs Rust, manages toolchains, Cargo, which builds Rust projects, adds packages, Wasmpack, which compiles Rust to Wasm files and JS Glue, and HTTP server, which serves your sites locally over HTTP. In the next section, we are going to create a project and walk through the code. Right, now that we have installed all the tools, it's time to actually create a Rust WebAssembly project and walk through it step by step. So to do that in your terminal, run this command to create a new project. Let's step into it. So what did this command do? We used dash dash lib to create a library project, not a binary. That's important because WebAssembly is meant to expose functions kind of like a shared library, not to run a standalone program. Most of the files you are seeing here are coming because of git, but the main files are cargo.normal and in source folder we have lib.rs. The main file we'll be working in is this, lib.rs. That's where our Rust code will go. Best to open it in Visual Studio Code. All right, so let's explore cargo.normal2. Okay, we are going to add two things here, a lib section to tell Rust how to compile our code and a dependency for wasm bind gen. So let's get to it. Okay, here's what these do. First, create type cdy lib tells Rust to compile the code as a C-style dynamic library. That's what WebAssembly needs in order to work properly in the browser. Second, Wasm BindGen is the crate, a Rust package that lets our Rust code talk to JavaScript and vice versa. Once the file is saved, we are ready to start writing Rust code that compiles to WebAssembly, which we are going to do next. So here we just created a new Rust library, set it up for WebAssembly, and added the dependencies that let us bridge between Rust and JavaScript. In the next section, we'll start writing actual code. To write code, we'll work with source slash lib.rs file. This is the main entry point for our Rust code when building a library. We are gonna delete anything that's already here and replace it with a simple function. Okay, let's go through this line by line. Line one is just importing the tools we need from Wasm bind gen crate. It, it lets Rust talk to JavaScript. You can think of it like an import statement in JavaScript. Without it, we wouldn't be able to expose any functions to the browser. Second is line three. This funky looking line is called an attribute macro in Rust. 
it's a way to attach special behavior to code, kind of like a decorator. In our case, it means make this function available to JavaScript when we compile to WebAssembly. If we forget this, the function would still exist inside the WASM file, but JavaScript won't be able to see it or call it. Next, we have our function line, a function definition. Let me break this line down too. Pub just means it's public, so it can be accessed outside of this file. The name colon ampersand str part is saying the function takes a borrowed string. That's a lightweight way to pass in a string without copying it. And finally, it returns a string which is an owned heap allocated string that we are okay sending back to JavaScript. All right, inside this function, we are just using Rust's built-in format macro to create a new greeting. It works a lot like template literals in JavaScript or printf in C. So if we passed in the name Alice, that would return the string hello Alice. So that's the code that we are gonna work with. In this section, we wrote a Rust function that takes a name, binds a greeting and returns it. So that was the hello world code we intended to write. So just to recap what we did here, we wrote a Rust function that takes a name, builds a greeting and returns it. Then by adding that wasm bind gen attribute, we made sure this function can be called directly from JavaScript after we compile to WebAssembly. Pretty cool, right? You'll be calling this from the browser in just a couple of minutes. Now that we have written a Rust function, it's time to compile it to WebAssembly using wasm pack. For that, let me bring up the terminal and issue command from the project root wasm pack build target web. This command compiles Rust to dot wasm and generates JavaScript glue code. Dash dash target web tells wasm pack to generate output for a browser. Other options include bundler, node.js, etc. but we use web to just keep it simple. Right, everything is ready. Now let's create a small HTML and a JavaScript front end to call the greet function from Rust. So I'm going to create a new index.html in root and add some code and then explain. All right, so our HTML is pretty straightforward. It's a basic UI with a header input, which takes the name of the user, a button to call our WASM code, and a paragraph output where we would display the output. For the code, we are importing init and greet from the package folder, uh, hello wasm rust.js. Init loads the wasm module and prepares it for use. When you use wasm pack, the Rust code is compiled into binary.wasm and in it ensures your browser knows how to load it correctly. It sets up memory, imports, and prepares everything before you can call your functions. Greet is the Rust function we wrote, now callable from JavaScript. We are using type equal to module in the script tag because modern browsers require it for ES module imports. This allows us to use imports directly in the browser. Await in it loads the wasm binary in the background. You must call in it before using any exported functions. Window.say hello line is binding the button click to our Rust exported function. It grabs the input name, calls greet function with name argument, and updates the DOM. In case you forgot, say hello is being used in button click. All right, our coding part is completely done. Now remember, WebAssembly must be served over HTTP, not opened by a file. So we cannot double click on this file in Windows Explorer and expect it to run. So to start, I mentioned my favorite is the HTTP server from Node.js, which can be invoked using npx HTTP server. And by the way, you can use basic HTTP server or Python's HTTP server using any of the commands which are being displayed right now. All of these are going to give you a URL, which you can click and see your files. So here we need to go to our HTML file. Oh, we incorrectly created index HTML inside package. So let me bring it to our root and refresh. And here it is. So I'm going to enter my name, press the hello, and hello Ali is being printed on the screen coming directly from our WASM code. So it's working perfectly. 
So let's quickly go over what happened when we loaded this page. Hello wasm rust.js was loaded from package folder. It loads the wasm binary, which is hello wasm rust.wasm file. Rust greet function becomes available in JavaScript now. You type your name, click the button, our JavaScript handler runs the Rust code and returns a greeting to JavaScript. Output shows hello early on the screen. So you just wrote Rust code that runs in the browser and talks to JavaScript. Before we finish, let's now take a quick behind the scenes look at how Rust, WebAssembly and JavaScript all work together under the hood. As a first step, Rust compiles to .wasm. Your Rust function is compiled into a binary wasm module. Thanks to wasm pack, think of .wasm as a tiny portable program that runs in the browser. It's not human readable like JavaScript. It's optimized bytecode. That's why we cannot see it in the Visual Studio code. As a next step, wasm bindgen generates the glue code. The wasm bindgen takes care of exposing Rust functions to JavaScript, handling memory conversions between Rust and JavaScript, for example, strings, and managing data layout so that they speak the same language. Wasm bindgen handles conversion under the hood so you don't have to. For example, when you pass a string from JavaScript to Rust, it has to be copied into WebAssembly's memory buffer, and then Rust reads it from there. The same happens when you return a string from Rust. It's stored in WebAssembly memory and then read by JavaScript. Wasm bindgen makes this seamless. All right, next player in our story is JavaScript which is being used in index.html. The init function that we call first loads the .wasm binary file, initializes the wasm runtime, and makes greet, which is a Rust function, callable in JavaScript. You call it like any JavaScript functions, but it's actually Rust under the hood. The .wasm file is your compiled program. Hello wasm rust.js file is like the translator. It knows how to talk to the wasm file, load it, and give JavaScript access to your Rust functions. When you build using wasm pack, our package folder contains hello wasm bg .wasm, which is the compiled Rust WebAssembly binary. Hello wasm.js is the JavaScript wrapper to call wasm safely. Package.json is for NPM support if you publish it. And .d.ts file is optional. It's for TypeScript support. Now you might ask, is WebAssembly faster than JavaScript? And the answer is yes, for CPU heavy tasks like math, graphics, audio, video, and games. No advantage for DOM work, JavaScript is better there. Wasm has startup code, loading, memory, and location, etc. But once loaded, it can be blazingly fast. We just saw Hello World, which does not reflect the true power and performance of Wasm, but, but trust me, it's much faster than JavaScript. So congrats, you have just built your first WebAssembly app using Rust and executed it successfully in the browser. If you found this useful, consider liking and subscribing. I'll be doing more hands-on videos with Rust and WebAssembly, including performance benchmarks, React integration, and real-world projects. Let me know in comments what you would like to see next. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.